right, good afternoon. I, uh, if you know me uh, much, you know that I'm, I'm what I would like to at least consider an optimist or somebody who looks at the glass half full in any situation. So if I look out and I see any of you with your eyes closed, I'm going to assume you're just praying this, this afternoon. Uh, and, and if you start opening your mouth a little bit and drooling, that's when I might start to think otherwise. No, I know that sometimes it can be hard, especially after you're eating a nice, wonderful, and delicious meal like that, for us to be able to remain focused, but I think it's an important time that we can focus on something that was very important within the cause of Christ, and when he sent out his apostles to go and, and then to uh, share on what is what is commonly known as the, uh, the limited commission, or the first commission uh, that we can see here in uh, Matthew chapter 12. Before we get started with a dive into what the twelve's actions were, of course you can look at within the first uh, five uh, or the first four verses, if you will, of Matthew chapter ten. You'll see listed the name of the you could known as the or what you could call them as the original twelve. Of course, uh, later on, after the death of a few, would begin to complicate things and introduce, of course, into the the fold some some newer ones to then take their place. Um, but you, you look in verse five in specific, and you'll see that that Jesus takes these 12 that he has gathered together, these 12 from different walks of life, these 12 from different backgrounds and different um, jobs that they might have had and different upbringings, and he then kind of unifies them with the common goal of then taking the message and delivering it to the rest of the world. Now, if you look at verse 1, he, he doesn't just send them out without anything on their side. Verse 1 says, And when, the, when he had called his 12 disciples, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease. And then when you get to verse 4, he then takes uh, the, those 12 and he, he, he then tells them to go out uh, into different parts of the world. Notice he says uh, in verse uh, 5, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter into a city of the Samaritans, but rather uh, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, Israel, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely you shall give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two, nor two tunics, nor sandals nor staff, for a worker is worthy of his food. He gets into verse uh, 11 as well and says, Now whatever city or town that you enter into, acquire who in it is worthy, and stay there until you go out. When you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you, uh, nor hear your words, when you depart from the house or a city, shake off the dust of your feet. Assuredly, I say unto you, uh, it will be a tolerable. Uh, it will be a tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. More tolerable, excuse me, for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the judgment day than for that city. So he sends them out on this commission, but he gives them some, some very specific and, and somewhat at times strange commands along with it. You're not to go into a city of the Gentiles or a city of the Samaritans, but you're to go and minister unto the lost sheep of Israel. Now that's a very important uh, message there for, for him to simply say the lost sheep of Israel. There was a specific goal. There was a specific mindset that was to be taken place when these apostles then were to take this message uh, of the Messiah and then go and share it with others. And he didn't want it to be delivered to the Gentiles. Their time would come, and it included within that, of course, the Samaritans. But he wanted them to specifically go and seek out those of the house of Israel, Jewish people of Jewish blood, uh, seek out them. And notice what he says, uh, when you go into the cities, go and preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and do so accompanied by healing their sick, cleansing their lepers, raising their dead, casting out their demons. Uh, freely you have received, freely you shall give. Meaning, I have given you the ability to do things that no other man can. I have given you the ability to cast out these demons, to heal these people of the sick, to raise them from the dead. And you have been given this fr gift freely, so go and give it out to others freely. Uh, share it with uh, those who you come in contact with. Then he gives them a little bit of a weird instruction about what happens if you go to a house and they don't accept you. Um, when you go into a city, notice also that part of those commandments is he's, he says you, they don't want, need to take a lot of things with them. 
They're, they're to rely on the goodness of those who they come in contact with. He says, yet when you come in contact with somebody who is not worthy or is not willing, uh, then on your way out, if they're not willing to listen to the message, simply stomp your feet on your way out the door as a reminder to simply say that you, you, have, you have tried and that you have moved on past that. He then describes that state that those, those people are in in verse 15. Assuredly, I say unto you that they will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in that day of judgment than for that city. So the ones who refuse to listen to the teachings of Jesus and the teachings of his apostles, or the teachings through his apostles of Jesus, those are, are in a worse state than that of Sodom and Gomorrah um, than, uh, on the judgment day. He continues on a little bit within this, and this is always a nice peaceful message when, when God is sending you out to do something. Immediately following the message about not taking things with you and going and facing people who aren't going to accept you, he follows it up by saying, some of these people are really not going to accept you. Because some of these people are going to bring upon you persecutions. Verse 16 says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. But be aware of men, for they will deliver you into, up to the councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before the governors and for, my, uh, for, and for kings, excuse me, and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when, you, when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what they sh you should speak. For it will be given unto you in the hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speaks, uh, but the Spirit of the Father who speaks within you. Now brother, uh, now brother will deliver up uh, brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated for all, for all, by all by my na for my name's sake. But when he who endures to the end will be saved, when they persecute you in this city... Flee to another, for assuredly I say unto you, you will not have gone through the, the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher, and a servant like his master. If they have been called the, the master of the house of Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of, the, of this household or of his household? Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, and hidden that will not be made known unto you. Once again, it's not a very encouraging, but also is a very encouraging message unto them. He says, okay, I'm sending you out, and you're going to face a lot of hard times. Not only are there going to be people who are going to not just uh, despise you, but even despise me. And he says, simply don't worry about that, because they're despising the master as well as you. And however, he says, even if you get up to the point where you're taken before the council, and you're put on trial, and you have to answer for those things. Don't worry, because the Spirit will guide you into to saying uh, what you need to say in those moments. We're going to talk a little bit about that towards the end of the lesson. But let's keep going in verse 27. It says, Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. Whatever you hear in, in the ear, preach on the housetops. Do not fear those who will kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows uh, sold for a coin, a, a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from the Father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, for you are of more value than many sparrows. When we look at the teachings that Jesus is trying to get them to understand, he says, okay, I'm sending you out and you have to put some faith in me. You have to put some trust in me. You're not supposed to take a lot of things because you're going to be taken care of along your path. Along that path or along that journey as you're going and teaching about uh, the Messiah, you're going to face people who don't like that teaching or who don't like you because you teach that teaching. And therefore you'll face persecution and maybe even face to the point where you can be beaten or scourged or even uh, taken in prison or put to death. But he continues on with that in verse 27 and kind of gives a little bit more of, of, of a helpful or a more uh, encouraging message. He says, simply take what I tell you and tell it to the others and understand that the Lord will provide. He takes care of the sparrows, and they can be bought too for a penny. And so he will definitely take care of you. And always remember, I've always found this a very interesting verse, verse 30. But the very heads of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, for you are of more value than many sparrows. He says simply, if God takes care of the sparrows, they can be bought for a penny. He will definitely take care of those who he cares for. Verse 32, he kind of continues with this. And an encouragement says, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, will all, he, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Verse 34 says, Do not think that I came to bring peace on this earth. For I did not uh, come to bring peace, but a sword. 
For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a, man, uh, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And, and, excuse me, uh, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his, his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Now you get into a little bit more of a serious uh, instance that Jesus is mentioning. Now you get to the point that says, okay, there, there might even come to the point where you, where you die. Might even come to the point where there's some division. There's some issues that arise. I always find it interesting that Jesus would use the phrase, I came not to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword or a divisible sword. One that divides even uh, father from mother, excuse me, um, uh, father from son, daughter from mother, uh, a friend uh, it becomes foe. Those who you seem to be close to become your enemies. And the reason why this is, is interesting is because if you don't understand what he's saying, it can be a little bit, not necessarily even contradictory, but a little bit strange for you to hear out of the, the one who is a peacemaker or who delivers a message about being a peacemaker. Simply what Jesus is saying here is when you teach these things, when you read or study or believe these things, there are going to be others who are not going to like that. There are going to be others who, uh, who do not agree with you, who are divided in, your, in their beliefs from you. And he simply said, I did not come to, to make sure that everybody gets along. I came sure to, so that people would know the truth. And notice what he says in verse 38. And he who does not take his own cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Even if it gets to the point where the division causes so much problems, so many issues, that you even lose your life itself. Simply trust in God and knowing that he will provide for you. He says in verse 40 as well. Um, sorry, I think my numbers are off right there on that one. Uh, he says in verse 40, He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me, him who sent me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple... Assuredly, I say it to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. So not only is he delivering a message, that, listen, you've got to go and then take the power that has been given unto you. You take what has been taught unto you and you share it with others. You show compassion. You take care of the needy by healing the sick or raising the dead or, 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 or casting out demons. You teach them the message of truth. And yes, this message of truth will cause division. There will be people who become enemies of you or those who forsake the kingdom of God or those who turn away from you or maybe even get to the point or they cause you harm even unto the point of death. But simply trust in God and follow after His will and everything will be alright. Now when you get to the last little portion of that, he begins to talk a little bit about those who will receive um, those disciples right there at the end of chapter 10. The one who it says even offers up a little cup of water unto a little one on behalf of my disciples. Simply meaning the ones who receive, the ones who don't neglect the teachings, the one who don't cause division or seek to destroy, the ones who don't turn their face away but rather welcome them in. To them, they will receive their reward. Their reward will not be loosened or they will not be held back from their reward. So what's the important thing that we can take from the teachings or the, the, the scriptures as they record the limited commission? Well, there's a few things that are different between us and the apostles. One, we did not witness Jesus physically. We did not meet the other standards that were required in order for one to be an apostle. So therefore, we are not on the same level as the apostles. And they also had the ability um, to cast out demons and to heal the sick and to raise the dead, which we do not have that ability to do so uh, today. However, look at, at what we do have the ability to do. And when they were given the command or they were given the charge to take the message and to show that compassion and to do so by teaching others, specifically those of the house of Israel in this instance, teaching others about the will of God. And as a result, they received their reward, even if that reward wasn't here on this earth. Even if that teaching brought them physical pain, they still received their reward. So what can we take this and apply it to our lives? We might not be like the apostles and that we have spiritual gifts which allow for us to perform miracles. We might not be sent on, a, on the same exact commission. We were sent on a different commission to share the gospel with others. We might not have been sent on the same exact commission 
We might not all leave everything that we're doing and go and rely on others to take care of our needs and enter from city to city and house to house as a way of spreading the gospel. But here's an important thing that we can understand and that we can grasp from this and then take and put in a more practical and hands-on sense. The important part for our walk with Jesus, our walk with the Lord, our work, but walk in serving after God's will is that we do not neglect to serve His will even in the face of trials or tribulation. In fact, James would write a whole book on it, and John even would touch on it in the book of Revelation in talking about all these things or all these persecutions that one might face when spreading the gospel. The important part is that we are willing to continue to spread the message of peace and of love brought on by Christ. Verse 32 and verse 33 are, are I guess what you could say, are key verses of Matthew chapter 10. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him will I also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. When I was younger, I simply looked at these two verses, and the immediate thought that came to my mind was, well, that means that if I'm you know, put at gunpoint and told that I've got to confess Jesus or not, then, then the one who confesses simply goes to, uh, that Jesus is the Christ, simply goes to heaven, and the one who does not is not a welcome into heaven. But this doesn't necessarily have to be a, a held at gunpoint kind of moment. This could be in any walk of our lives. When we go through our lives and we fail or, or neglect to teach others about, the, about Jesus and about His love and about His care, what we're doing is, is we're simply denying Jesus. Whether we say it verbally or not, we're denying Jesus. We're denying His message to be spread. We're denying His love to be shown. We're denying uh, the ability for those to come in contact with His mercy. But the one who simply goes with confidence and shares the teachings or the messages of the Messiah with the world will receive the reward that is offered to us in heaven. So let me ask you one thing before we close, and that is, will you receive him? Notice that those who were welcomed into the city or those who were in the city when the apostles came and entered in had the opportunity to either reject or receive him, uh, the, the apostles. And as a result of rejecting him, they turned their backs on them and they continued on with somebody else. I urge you this afternoon that if you are in the position where you have been rejecting the Messiah. You have been re rejecting the teachings of Jesus. You've turned your back on Him. I urge you to make a difference in, in your life and begin to confess Him before men so that we can stand before God in eternity, in eternity with great confidence knowing that we will be welcomed to be with Him forever. If you need prayers of the church, need to be added to the Lord's church through baptism, or need repentance, please come while we stand and while we sing.